In the small Romanian town of Sapenza, when you die, you can expect a colorful farewell. Death is considered a somber and even scary thing here in the United States. Funerals are sad affairs and cemeteries aren't meant for the living to tread. We've never believed that here at Alice Obscura. We celebrate in cemeteries and consider ourselves pretty death positive. If you don't know what that could possibly mean, you should just ask a mortician. But in the small town of Sapenza, Romania, they share our views about death. Because if you want to see the humor or joy in dying, just take a walk in the Mary Cemetery. When someone dies, their memory often enters a kind of idealized state. We tell the good stories about them and not the bad stories. If their death was tragic, we gloss over it. We end up with this kind of tiny version of this person's life, often reduced to as little as rest in peace on their tombstone. Not so at the Mary Cemetery. Stan Iwa Patras was born in the small Romanian town of Sapenza in 1908. By the young age of 14, he was already carving the crosses for the local cemetery. By 1935, he was adding little limericks, painting images of the deceased onto the wooden marker, even sometimes painting the way they died onto the markers. A soldier with his head being cut off or someone being hit by a truck. He created this kind of folk art around the deceased. On the grave markers, Yellow represented fertility, green represented life, red represented passion, black represented death. Sometimes there was a dove that represented the soul, or a blackbird that would represent a particular tragic or suspicious death. And it was always set against a deep blue called Sapensa Blue, which he believed represented not just his hometown, but hope, possibility, freedom. But another thing that worked its way onto the grave markers wasn't just the symbolism, but his dark sense of humor. One reads, here lies my mother-in-law, Try not to wake her up, for if she comes back, she'll bite my head off. Another one says, he loved horses, but not as much as he loved sitting next to someone else's wife at the bar. <laughs> Patrash single-handedly carved over 800 of these grave markers. It was his singular vision to make the cemetery a place that was bright and colorful and funny and rude and full of life in a way that very few cemeteries ever are. Stan Petrus died in 1977, but not before he carved his own cross, painted it, and handed the work to his most talented apprentice, Dimitru Pop. Pop has carried on the tradition for the last four decades, and the cemetery has developed a small museum to go with it. Despite the dark comedy, or sometimes just dark themes of the crosses, no one has ever complained. They want to see their real lives represented. If the person liked to drink, you show that. If they like to work, you show that. It's a small town there are no secrets, people want the reality. As we all know, life is messy. Why not show that in death as you lived it in life? Subscribe here and watch more videos here. And if you haven't actually checked out Ask a Mortician, you should. It's great. Uh, it will explain death positivity, a lot about the death industry. We also made a really awesome video about necropants. If you haven't learned about necropants, you are in for a treat.